Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me today, joining us today um, to give feedback uh, about your Gov GovHack experience. So you are the team ESG genius, if I'm correct. So it would be great if you guys could introduce yourself. Yeah, sure. G'day. I'm Jamie. I'm Pulkit. I'm Akash. And together mm -hmm. with them, we are genius. We are genius and also data. Way. So we had a huge team we had like a group of nine people nine people split across, and split across two different projects and we had one team called dataway and another one called es genius so we tried to tackle multiple projects one team was tackling two projects and uh, es genius was tackling the emissions one the infosys challenge so that's amazing um i didn't know that a single team could even work on several challenges so you probably broke a record there isn't it it also speaks to the way that a team can actually operate that you were able to submit multiple um, multiple different challenges in different areas uh, via a single team right so even though it's difficult right to concentrate like that and to refocus all the members but it's amazing that you managed to submit it yeah and then still get honorable mention didn't you it was really challenging yeah. on the last day, if you remember, like we were trying to uh, basically submit all those projects and we had an admin page, like two or three admin pages that we had to manage. So yeah, that was definitely something that we really thought about, you know, have a smaller team and be more focused on the challenge and just one problem, tackle it really well. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, and when you started, you decided to do ES Genius, um, what did you set out to build? So we formed a team, Dataway, and we are a group of nine people who came together to form a single vision, which was mm -hmm. solving problems using data. And mm -hmm. we chose two challenges across ESG, which is like environment, sustainability, and governance. And the other one was around tourism but talking about ESG first. So we were all passionate about solving challenges across building sustainability across Australia, different states, and comparing it across the globe. So our approach involved like a data value chain approach, which was which we compared different solutions and different architectures, starting from data ingestion up to consumption. And we had a look at different data sets available across Australia, comparing different industries from manufacturing, waste management, vehicles, and compared Australia's position across the globe. And the main vision of our project was to inform the government and the stakeholders across the position and how we can make, meet different protocols such as Paris Agreement of 2015. That's very interesting. Um, I want to jump into another question, but I'm going to ask now, like just tagging onto what you just said. So how, how does Australia compare? Australia, I would say, is definitely growing. But like comparing the data from OECD, like Australia has still a long way to catch in terms of like yeah. if we talk about automotive industry. But yes, mm -hmm. sooner or later, Australia can achieve its net zero target if the companies and different individuals and the government together in synergy come across to solve the ESG challenge. Yeah, so especially if we have teams like you who uh, find innovative solutions to actually highlight how we are doing and addressing them, right? That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. This year, we will also have a category around sustainability. So we are very much looking forward to um, what kind of results we get there. And what I would like to be like asking and what I'm interested in, what kind of skills do you actually bring to the challenge? Well, right. given we had quite a large team and we were sort of splitting between two initially. So we had two separate data engineers uh, that were proficient in data architecture, ETL process and big data technologies. We had one economist who sort of provided a subject matter expert role on it for the modeling and analysis. Um, we had one business analyst sort of to ensure the project got managed between the two, sort out all the admin and all the ad hoc tasks in between. We had three UX slash video designers. Um, uh, we had a cybersecurity specialist as well. It was our first time. So we sort of wanted to bring a different lens of data in there as well. And finally, we had a quality assurance tester to ensure the reliability of our solutions. Yep. You had a perfect product management team there. <laughs> and did you achieve all that you hoped uh, you hoped for in the brief period of time that you had? We were able to achieve certain criteria, like we wanted to do proper analysis of the big data sets that we were diving into, and those were public domain data sets. So we wanted to analyze what comes out of those. We generated those insights and synthesized all those insights for the 
uh, GovHack folks to review. Our data analysis was just on the spot. But yeah, the way we represented all that data, we could have found or invested more time on that front. Basically, projection of data, the presentation, the prototype that we were building. So the fig we used Figma for that, and I think we could have spent more time on that. Yeah, yeah. looking at it, uh, you had the perfect product team, you know, <laughs> to create a product, and then you, uh, combined with a uh, go-to-market team, which we'll have next time. Uh, yeah. You could um, you could have uh, the perfect product and bring it to market, right? Yeah, uh, we we think I think we could have done better estimation of effort as well in mm -hmm. terms of how much effort would each task require, and when it's two days, we couldn't do the right estimations. And we did get stuck down in details on certain things, and that didn't leave us the full time for execution. So it was a mad rush on Sunday afternoon to get it all through. Yeah. We spent so long discussing the fun things and not enough time just doing things. Yes. And what uh, what are um are some of the skills you think that made made you successful to to be able to submit and then still get um, a honorable mention? I just think our drive to actually do it. I think yeah. we're all passionate. We really enjoyed it. It was a, honestly a really fun weekend. As silly as it sounds to be locked in a room with a bunch of people doing what people consider work. But it was honestly a lot of fun. So that was probably the biggest driving factor for our success. And like the curios curiosity that we all had to solve a problem that was given to us, it's like a challenge. And uh, what were some of the tools and techniques you used to um, complete the project? Uh, you mentioned Figma. Yeah, definitely. Figma was one of our key UX design tools. We also used like data visualization and analytics tool like Microsoft Power BI and Microsoft Power Query for like extracting data, transforming it, loading it back to Power BI so that it can be used to present uh, analysis in the form of a dashboard. We also use Canva for website exploration, development, and voiceover which we combined with Figma together. And in terms of techniques, we used the best practice architecture and the best practice data value chain, which is generally used across governments, different businesses, starting from uh, data ingestion, processing analytics to visualization, which was our key driving pathway for exploring data set and der deriving insights from it. And uh, looking at the data you were provided, did you, did, did you, um, did you find anything surprising? Uh, I would say data was insightful. Like we used data from multiple government data sets from Australia, from OECD, from World Bank to have a more holistic picture of Australian landscape as well as its comparison across the globe. We also find, uh, found one thing that the data is not standardized across uh, different horizons and it varies, the metrics vary around different nationalities and there's no single source of truth for capturing the ESG data. And ESG problem, involves capturing data from the entire supply chain. And sometimes we just look at the data, which is at the end end, end user consumption. So finding end-to-end -end data across supply chain is challenging. And to build a comprehensive dashboard, we, we might need very comprehensive data sets, which start from manufacturing up to end user consumption. Mm. Yeah, okay, understood. So what do you think in total did you get out of joining GovHack? Well, there's plenty of things from it, right? I mean, we had a great weekend. Uh, we're all still mates moving forward. Even the ones who are interstate, we still get contact with. It's, um, mm -hmm. yeah, and we're keen to go again this year. So, and I think uh, if you look look at all the uh, all the work that happened, there was a lot of diverse skill sets in one room, and we were trying mm -hmm. to tackle the whole problem in that short time frame. So a lot of innovative methods came out of that whole process. Like we learned how to do things faster. And in fact, right after the hackathon, we, I think, I'm, I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure maybe everyone has applied that. I applied some of those techniques uh, at, at my professional work as well. And I think it has helped me, you know, be more efficient and a bit more productive because hackathon is also a way you hack ways of doing things. So the ways of working changes. So definitely a, a couple of things I, I, I'm still applying in my day-to-day -day engagements. So I think that's just amazing. Well, that's great to hear. Well, that's our understanding of a hack, right? Because when whenever someone hears hackathon, the first thought is like, okay, um, developers are going to be uh, locked together in a basement with a cup of coffee and then have a go at uh, recording something, right? When in all reality, it's now that um, uh, the idea is to to find a solution to a problem, right? A hack. 
mm -hmm. right? And and how you how you deliver it and with who you deliver it, it doesn't really matter, right? And then for teams, we want them to be agile and have um, representation from from different kind of areas to make the project come together. As we as we discovered here, right? Um, you needed some more go to market people and and then ready to package and off to market with it, right? Yeah. That's <sighs> Thank you so much uh, for your interview. And, and and I think you answered my last question already, whether you would be joining this year. Definitely. We, did. we do have a plan this time. Okay. And and with our new themes, I'm not sure if you have read about it, but our new themes are cybersecurity, AI, uh, digital transformation, and sustainability. Which one would you be choosing? Oh, yeah, we might leave that for a surprise for the tournament. Yeah. yeah. It's a secret, right? <laughs> okay. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Perfect. Well, we're really looking forward to have you join this year. Uh, registrations will open uh, next week. So we'll be announcing that shortly. That's incredible. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Tim. Go back. Yeah.